I'm gonna spend 100 days in a magical Minecraft world. What's so magical about it? I mean, what's not magical about it? We're talking dragons, hippogriffs, sirens, so many mythical creatures. And not only that, but also tons of crazy structures and dungeons to explore and a lot of new mystical loot to collect. All of this comes from a mod pack called RL Craft, which you may be familiar with. It's widely known to be one of the most fun and most difficult mod packs out there. Throughout these 100 days, I plan on adventuring and exploring as much as I can. But things are just not as simple as that. Before the 100 days run out, I have to defeat Amalgalich, who is the most powerful boss in RL Craft. To defeat him, I'll have to get the best gear in the game. Tide Guardian Armor and Dragon Bone Weapons. There's a lot of adventuring and gearing up to do, and there's a deadline to meet. So, it's time for us to begin our journey. On day one, I just took a look around and instantly saw these new creatures and a netherrack tower and a dragon. <laughs> I got out of there. Today was my first day. I just wanted to find a place to live. So I began searching. While searching for an area, I found some pigs, which I killed for food. And then I found this tower, which I thought could have something pretty good inside. But when I checked, it had absolutely nothing. Yeah, literally nothing, which was pretty disappointing. But anyways, after that, I ended up finding a village and this village had a really cool design to it. It pretty much only had food in it, but I was really happy with just finding shelter and a bed. As I was settling in though, something started attacking the village. Uh oh. It's killing all the villagers. No, how did it get in? I probably left a... Uh... Oh my god. This is my fault. Gotcha. After that, I wanted to start collecting some resources. In RL Craft, collecting resources is more difficult for no reason. Like, you can't break trees without an axe. So, for the time being, I just got some rocks and some sticks, and I made a stone knife to protect myself in case any more creatures would sneak up on me in the village. It was almost nighttime, so I started heading back home, and on the way there, I ran into this bone dragon. At the time, I thought that this was a dragon that was alive, but was sleeping, but it turns out this was just a dead dragon, and I only ended up realizing that later on. But anyways, for now, I got home safely and headed to sleep right away. With the start of day two, there was a lot to be done. It was time for me to get the essentials, tools, armor, just everything I needed to start. So I crafted a stone ax and went out to chop some trees, but uh, it, it just, it couldn't be that easy, could it? Oh. Are you kidding me? <sighs> yeah, yeah, the world was quickly letting me know who, who was the boss here. Anyways, I was able to get my loot back, kill the, the tree thingy, and, and get back to chopping trees. And after chopping trees for a bit, I noticed that there was a battle tower near me. So I decided to check it out and on top of it, it had a double chest. Now, the chest didn't have much, but I knew that this tower had more layers to it nesting itself into the ground in which there would be better and better loot. So I plan to return to it in a bit. Now, since I was already adventuring, I decided to adventure a little bit more and I ended up finding a village 
and and then uh <clears throat> and then this happened oh my god run 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 no what was that that <laughs> scared me so much but anyways i was able to get some loot from the village and then nighttime came so i just slept the night away in a sleeping bag the sun came up and day three was here and i started making my way back home from the village but as i was on the way honestly i i i, I kind of got lost and, and on top of that though hyperthermia started killing me yeah apparently i was too hot for the game this temperature mod sucked anyways i was able to make it back home and head to sleep before the night started to spawn anything crazy and on the next day i made some more stone tools and was then able to loot another level of the tower by mining into the side of its wall from which i got some better loot for sure i made a stone rapier as well which was a huge upgrade from the stone knife that i had before and that was pretty much it for this day on the following day i made an antique atlas which is a map that lets you mark locations on it so I was able to mark where my house is and this is so useful because I was getting lost a lot and this comes in handy for the whole hundred days. By the way, the annoying clinking and clinking noises that you can hear when I'm at my base come from the guardians that guard the villagers. I don't know why these minions are so loud, but that's what the noise is coming from. I decided to try and loot the lower levels of the battle tower because I knew that it would be the best way to get loot early on. But when I dug down to the lower levels, I was met with some difficulties. Ow, all the way up here? Okay, that's really bad. I was really close to dying there. And, and keep in mind that if the hearts for my head or chest go to zero in the bottom left corner, I instantly die. So with caution, I returned to looting and I was able to get some pretty good armor and useful materials. After a bit, I was finally returning back up to the surface with all of the loot that I had obtained. And, <laughs> oh, and then this happened. Out. No. No. Uh. I was able to return and luckily the Banshee was no longer there and I was able to get my stuff back. But that, that's terrible. I stood, I stood no chance. Anyways, after that, I put all the loot that I had gotten in a chest and then went back to looting again. I made it to the lair right above the tower golem boss. And on this lair, I could not open the chest because he made it so that any chest around him could not be open. I wanted to find a way to defeat them, but there was no way I would be able to do it in one-on-one -on -one face to face combat because he would probably just one shot me so i knew that the only way for me to defeat him this early on was to make a summoning staff so i returned home and on the next day i made a summoning staff this allows you to summon minions and they are actually pretty powerful however i was not able to use it yet because my skill level in magic was not at level eight and I needed to level it up. And to do that, you need to use experience points. What I did is I went back down to the chest that was right above the tower golem layer, broke it, and fortunately, I got bottles of experience from doing so. Using those, I was able to get my magic skill level to level eight so I could finally use my summoning staff. Day seven came along and I was really excited to use the new summoning staff, but the world, it was just not on board with that. Instead, it gave me hyperthermia again. Yeah, so I just had to sit in water so that I wouldn't die for the longest 
time. Eventually, I was able to make it back over to the battle tower. It was time to put my summoning staff to use and see if I could defeat the tower golem boss. I carefully opened a little pathway to the boss, staying as far away from it as I could in hopes that the pathway would be large enough to let my pets through it. I sat back in a corner and my pets were able to get to the tower goal. After a while, they defeated him and I was able to loot the final chest that he was guarding. And let me tell you, this chest had some good stuff in it. Lots of diamonds, a miner's ring, which gives you haste when you wear it in your bauble item slot, which are new item slots that are in our L-Craft, and just a lot of useful loot overall. After five days of trying to loot this battle tower, I had finally done it, and I returned home with all of my newfound loot. When I returned to the village though, I saw that it was burning in multiple areas, and that meant that it was very likely attacked by a dragon. I was angry, okay? This dragon always flies around my village and bullies me as is, making me have to be very, very sneaky to get into my base, and now it's attacking it as well. Oh, I, I wanted to kill it so bad, but... <laughs> There was no way for me to defeat it until I would be better prepared. And with that being said, my next mission was to tame a rock. Because if I could tame this beast, I would be able to fly around with it. How OP? How OP is that? It would make defeating sea serpents and dragons and just everything so much easier. These things only spawn in the night though, and, and you need these avian treats to gain their trust so that you can tame them so i made some treats and went out at night which i had been avoiding the night this whole time and, and for for good reason i waited and waited but no rock was in sight and instead instead this happened I went to sleep because there was no way I was risking not getting my loot back. And for another two days, I continued to try but fail in taming a rock. I mean, come on, at one point I died to a floating shovel. That's as bad as it can get. On day 10 though, I was determined to succeed. I sat out in the night on peak awareness levels, okay? And you know what? It worked because two rocks came at me at once yep let's go come here i was finally able to tame one of these this was the fourth day of me literally only trying to tame a rock there was one problem though it, it kind of picked me up before i tamed it and i ended up being kind of stuck in the sky for a while but eventually it dropped me to the ground and i made my way or at least i tried to make my way back home fortunately my rock had survived and it teleported to me when i respawned on the next day as i was heading back to my loot though i got blown up by a skeleton that shoots fireballs yeah good to know that that exists now i didn't mind dying that much but this time when i respawned my my rock didn't teleport back to me did my rock die Please tell me my rock did not die. Please tell me it did not die. Yeah, it died to that skeleton too. I was... I was really bummed out. But I knew that I couldn't give up. And on day 11, I was finally able to tame a rock. It wasn't really time to celebrate yet though. I should have learned that from my past experiences by now. So I cautiously made my way back home and was able to get back and get a saddle on the rock. I was then able to craft a soul gazer using the loot that I had gotten from the battle tower I looted previously. And oh yeah, by the way, I died to hyperthermia after after that, just so you know. Hyperthermia is still killing me every single day. But anyways, anyways. Then I was able to craft a soul stone. And 
when I used this on the rock, it made it so that even if it would die, I would be able to re-summon it. Awesome, that's it. I had a permanent flying mount. I did not have to worry about taming a rock anymore, which I had spent so much time trying to do. I was ecstatic. To make the rock as strong as possible, I also put some armor and a chest on him as well, and I was all set to start adventuring. I equipped some armor and a weapon and headed out. I wasn't looking for anything specific on this trip. Really, I was looking for anything that would make me stronger and get me closer to being able to defeat a sea serpent because the armor that those give is really powerful. And I knew that if I wanted to be able to defeat the final boss, Amalgalich, there was no way I was gonna be able to do that without the Tide Guardian armor. So I flew everywhere, marking any structures or dungeons that I found along the way using my antique atlas. As I was flying, I was able to find this village. Now, normally it wouldn't be anything special, but in our craft, farming crops actually gives you XP. And this village had a lot of wheat. This meant that I would be able to gain a lot of experience from this and invest it into skill points so that I would be able to wear better gear and ultimately be able to defeat stronger enemies. While I was trying to land, I noticed that there was a dragon here though, so I knew that I would have to be pretty careful when farming here. Eventually, I landed and started farming the wheat and uh, my luck is, it's just not great. Not only one, not two, but three of these things spawn in a short period of time from me farming. And after the third one, my health for my head was at half a heart and I was dying from hyperthermia at the same time. Here we go with hyperthermia again. I barely stayed alive from that. But after I healed up, I came back, and then this Aegis, this minion robot guardian thingy, just randomly started attacking me. I, I mean, I, I guess maybe I accidentally hit it or something. I literally have no idea. What? What? What is that? The next morning, I returned for my loot, and Luckily, was able to get it all back, but because of how risky this farming had been, I decided that I would leave for now and return home to regroup. Uh, for the rest of this day, I ended up just uh, dying to hyperthermia and not getting like anything done. It was really annoying me. So I decided that I needed to make some items that would help me out with the heat and cool me down, and I needed to do that as soon as possible. The cooling coil and cooling liner gear were my best bets for stopping my problems with heat. But the difficulty was that I needed ice cubes in order to craft them, and there was no ice anywhere near me, nowhere. So that was my next goal, to find ice. And on the next day, my search for ice began. While I was searching, I ended up finding this cool statue, but it didn't really end up having anything in it. And then I found this battle tower as well that was above ground. And I just summoned my pets to attack the tower golem while I sat back and relaxed and drank a pina colada. My pets ended up hitting the battle tower so far back that it got knocked into the water. But I didn't really mind and I just took this as a chance to loot the chest that he was guarding. And I have to say, it gave me some pretty solid loot. As I kept searching, I also found this building which I checked out and it was inhabited by some villagers. I casually took a look around at the loot that the villagers kept in their chests and borrowed some of their items. There was some pet gear and some books and when I went up the stairs I found some chests with ores in them as well. Also, each of the rooms on the second floor had chests in them as well, so I looted all of those. With that, I had finished looting everything in the building and I headed to sleep because it was nighttime. Exiting the building, I actually saw a biome with 
ice in it right in front of me. I flew over to it and mined for ice cubes wherever I could, and I got over a stack of them, which felt like a pretty good amount to me, so I stored the ice cubes on my rock and headed back for home. On the way back though, <sighs> I might have gotten a bit ahead of myself. Yeah, I I tried to defeat a sea serpent. I, I thought that my height advantage would have helped me, but my pets just wouldn't attack the thing even though I was hitting it with my arrows. And and, and then this, this happened. Oh. Attack. What? Oh, there was a dragon behind me. Oh, are you serious? I just ran into a dragon from behind. I got wrecked. I got wrecked. And on the way back to my loot, my rock glitched out. And so I was trying to resummon it. And while doing that, I got killed by, by a dragon. And then I returned to that death spot on the next day and was able to give my rock one of my atlases. But then I just got killed. I just got killed by the dragon again. Okay, that's fine. I mean, I retrieved one atlas. I think that's all I'm gonna be able to do, honestly. You know what? It was actually fine that I died and lost most of my loot because I didn't lose the ice cubes that I had mined up. I actually put those on my rock's chest before I started returning back home. So. I had enough ice cubes to craft cooling liner. Upon doing so, however, it turned out that I only had enough slime balls to make two pieces of it, which wasn't even enough to make boots out of it. I figured that it didn't matter and I would get slime balls later, but for the time being, I would at least make a cooling coil for my house using some ice cubes. But without thinking, I had converted all of my ice cubes into ice. So I didn't even have enough of them to make a cooling coil. I tried to break the ice I made to get ice cubes back from it, but I didn't. That meant that I was back to where I started and I had to go get ice again while suffering from hyperthermia the whole time. I searched through the night and by the next day, I was once again able to find a biome with some ice in it. I didn't go to the one I went to before because it didn't have a lot of ice and it was just easier for me to go to a new area. I mined around and got about two stacks of ice cubes this time just so that I would have extra in case I would need them for anything else. I returned to my base by nighttime and was finally able to make a cooling coil. I activated it by using some water and a lever, and after that, it kept my home cool. I didn't have any more difficulties with hyperthermia at home. I also tried the cooling coil outdoors, and it was a fail. It, it did not work at all. If I stood on it, I thought it would work. Nope. Nope, did not work. Throughout days 19 to 26, my goal was ultimately the same, to continue getting experience, baubles, and then some, that's a funny word, baubles. Anyways, and then some more specific things, such as slime balls that I needed to make cooling liner gear. Days 19 to 22, I spent looting this battle tower. And while doing so, I had so many complications. <laughs> It's honest, it's just frustrating. First of all, these flying demons just kept harassing me. What is this? Oh my god. No, man. Oh my god. And after I struggled with those, these things called Gorgonites just completely demoralized me. Agus, yeah, come here, come here. Kill all of them. Wow, they keep, they actually keep spawning. This is crazy. What's, what? They just duplicate. They, they're just duplicating. Man, I actually can't believe this. What's going on? How do they duplicate? They duplicate. They duplicate. They duplicate. <sighs> now they've added duplicating mobs so that I can't get my things back. Yeah, all my stuff's gone. It wanted it wanted all my stuff to despawn. I like I know, I know. 
it literally made me lose all my things on purpose. I, it's just so stupid how that works. Uh, I don't like how this is programmed. I mean, now eventually, after after a long time, I was able to defeat the tower golem and loot the battle tower fully. Yes. Yes. Oh, it took so long. It took so long, but I did it. Look, oh. Unfortunately, I didn't get any slime balls from this battle tower, but I did get some blaze rods and other useful items as well. From days 23 to 26, I spent time farming another wheat village, cleared up some more battle towers, and defeated a sea serpent that got stuck on the battle tower that I had defeated, which actually gave me 11 sea serpent scales. Not bad, that was pretty lucky. Now keep in mind I couldn't actually use sea serpent gear at all yet because my skill level and armor just wasn't high enough. But after I defeated the sea serpent, what I did gain is confidence. My confidence level shot up to the sky. And honestly, that was, it wasn't a good thing. While I was flying around, I ended up getting seduced by some sirens and I practically had no armor on when this happened. I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to fend them off, but I tried to stay at range, hit them with my rapier, and I was able to survive. On day 27, I did a lot of exploring as usual, but the main event was that I started trying to defeat this huge sea serpent, like the biggest sea serpent I could find. While I was focusing on that though, a dragon shot at me from behind. Now I was fine, okay? I was fine when it shot at me. It didn't, didn't kill me. But I should have just listened to this as a sign and stopped trying to kill the sea serpent. But you know what? I did it. I didn't and that's when something bad happened. Yeah, I'm dead. Mm. I started flying back to my loot right away and got back to it in the nighttime. But unfortunately, as I was trying to follow my antique atlas to my death point, I got seduced by some sirens that I didn't see and I had nothing to protect myself with, which I probably should have, so they just killed me. My loot had despawned by now and I just had to accept that. I mainly just lost some good baubles, but I could get those back by looting some more battle towers, so it wasn't too much of a loss. I now knew that if I wanted to defeat a sea serpent, I needed to get a better bow. And to do that, there were multiple things that I needed to do. First of all, I would need to craft a better version of the bow than the, just the default bow itself. Then, I would need to make sure that I had the enchantments for that bow, but thirdly, to use a higher level bow, I would also need to fasten my experience gain so that I would have enough skill points to use a better bow. So, it was my plan to farm blights. Blights are these rare mobs that spawn in the nighttime and have pink flames around them. And when you defeat one of them, they drop a lot of experience. Also, they drop some crystals, which you can then form into extra hearts that you keep permanently. That meant that farming these mobs would get me both the skill points that I needed and a lot of additional health. So I decided that I would start hunting for blights and just experience in general for as much as I could and also look to get the materials I needed to make a dragon bone bow, which was the best bow that you can make. And this ended up actually being a lot easier than I thought it would have been, and you'll see why in a bit. On the next day, while out looking for experience and materials, I found this lighthouse that had a lot of iron blocks in it. So I marked it to return to it later. And then, I don't know what I was thinking. Like, I, 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 I'm, I'm actually, I have no idea. I tried to defeat another sea serpent. <laughs> no, I was, I was just ahead of myself. My pets wouldn't attack it. So I tried to go in for a melee hit to aggro my pets to it, 
get, get them to attack the the sea serpent and no it just destroyed me i was able to get my loot back after but i still have no idea what i was thinking honestly i should have just crafted a bow a basic bow got some arrows and then shot at it a bit with that and my pets would have probably attacked it anyways i got back home and there was always this bone dragon that was outside of my base right and I was looking for ways to get dragon bones. Now, I thought that this was a bone dragon that was alive. It turns out that it's a dead dragon. So I realized that if I run up to it, click on it a bit, I could get dragon bones. It was literally as easy as that. Because of the dragon skull that I got from this, I would be able to make a dragon's eye bauble if I got some more materials as well. And this bauble makes it so that you literally take no fire damage, not even from dragons, and also you gain permanent night vision. That meant that with this bauble, killing dragons was pretty much no problem at all. To make one though, I still needed to get more glowing ingots and I would have to wait on that for now. On the morning of the following day, I found this massive structure that looked amazing. It looked kind of like it was a haunted church or something. I knew that I wouldn't be able to safely adventure through the building yet, so I marked it to return when I had better gear. I also ended up finding a library, and in it, there was an infinity and power four book. Yeah, isn't that absolutely crazy? With these enchantments, I could make a god bow. I immediately returned home and was really excited to finally reap the benefits of all of my hard work in the past several days. But of course, things just, things just couldn't go well, could they? Yeah, yeah, I was in a very bad situation. Like, how did that even happen? I think a villager literally opened the door for the husk, and I'm not sure how I ended up not having a spawn point set. Anyways, this was bad. Coordinates weren't in RL craft, so I couldn't just pop up F3 and see where my base was, and respawn points were completely random. So I literally had no clue of how to find my base. To find an area that I was familiar with, what I did was just die a bunch of times so that I could find somewhere that I could recognize. I didn't have to do the dying though, luckily. Yeah, the game had that covered for me. Oh, it's good. This one, I'll just instantly die. All right. Eventually, I was able to find one of these waypoints and using that, I teleported to, well, to literally the only location that I was able to, and it ended up being the village that was next to my home. I could not believe it. But I was more worried about my things because they likely would have despawned by now. So I raced over to my base and you know what? My stuff was still there. Home. With that, I quickly slept to make sure that my spawn point was set and something like that would never happen again. The next day I wasted some time on making the wrong thing. I was trying to make a reforging station, but apparently there are two versions of it and I made the wrong one. Yeah, anyways, I'll talk more about this later because I do make the right one later on. For now, let's talk about when I began working on the perfect bow. The first thing that I did was make a dragon bone longbow using the dragon bones I had collected earlier. Alongside the longbow, I was also able to make a dragon bone rapier, which is an amazing melee weapon. To be able to use these weapons though, I needed to get a 24 skill level in attack and an 18 skill level in agility. I only had 16 levels in attack and agility, which means that I had a lot of enchantment points to collect. It was nighttime, so I went out and defeated some blights and then enchanted the dragon bone bow with the infinity and power four books that I had gotten. Day 32, all I did was get more experience in loot, but at the end of the day, I found chests that were being guarded by a sleeping dragon and, and I got kind of curious. I can't see anything because of this bug, man. Oh no! 
It was a trap, man. I sh I knew that. I knew I should have saw it coming. I should have saw it coming, honestly. You know, honestly, I kind of I kind of saw that coming. I ended up trying to bait the dragon away from my loot on the next day, and uh, it didn't work. <laughs> I died again, so my loot was lost. But I didn't have anything that special on me, so I was okay with that. And I resumed working towards the perfect bow. I actually got some slime from the battle towers that I was clearing. So I made a pair of cooling liner boots and I put this on my boots and this made it so that I could finally stay cool while traveling. The next day, I made a very powerful item. In fact, two of the same very powerful item. You know what it was? It was the ring of resistance. This thing took a lot of diamonds to be crafted, but from all of the battle towers that I had been clearing, that was not much of a problem for me. These two rings combined gave me permanent resistance too, which reduces any damage that you take by 40%. I know, that's just, it's just crazy. The rings were an amazing addition to my loadout, and after getting them, I went out in the night to hunt for some more blight mobs. While exploring on day 35, I was able to find a Sharpness 4 enchanted book. And on top of that, I was able to defeat another sea serpent that got stuck on land. But it only gave me one scale, which was a complete scam. It was a scammer sea serpent. That scamming operation needed to be looked into. But anyways, I kept traveling and I found this Cyclops' cave. And I tried to defeat him using my pets and just staying back. But you know what he did? He ate my pets. Oh, he picked them up. No, I'm getting out of here. Nope. Nope. I got as far away as possible from that Cyclops as I could. But I did plan to avenge my pets when I would get my new bow, which was actually pretty soon. Day 36 was a big, big day. I made some heart containers using the heart shards I had been getting from hunting blight mobs, and these gave me some permanent hearts, which was awesome. And on top of that, by the end of the day, I had done it. I had gotten enough skill points to use the dragon bone bow and the dragon bone rapier as well. Before I went out and finally got to use my new bow, which I was so excited to use, I made a reforging station, which I had mentioned earlier. This time, the right one though. This basically lets you re-roll traits on your gear. So sometimes gear will have a trait like plus 10% attack damage or sometimes it'll be minus 10% attack damage. So this lets you change that and get better ones. Also, by now I had enough skill levels in armor to use diamond armor, so that was really exciting as well. And I enchanted my dragon bone rapier with the sharpness four book that I had gotten earlier. Yeah! Oh, looking good, man. I ended up spending the rest of the day just using the reforging station on all of my pieces of gear to make sure that I have good traits on all of them. And on day 38, I finally went out to use my new bow and attempt to defeat some sea serpents. After searching for a bit, I found a red sea serpent that was on the ground. Now was the time to put the dragon bone bow to the test. I killed it! Yes! <laughs> oh! One sea serpent, two sea serpents, and while I was doing this, I needed to make sure that I kept this bow safe after all of the hard work that went into getting it, right? Yeah, yeah, welcome to sea serpent number three. Gotcha! Oh! No! 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 Oh no 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 The bow that I had worked towards for 35 days gone. 
the ray beard that had sharpness four on it gone both deep underwater where it would take a miracle for me to get them back i thought i could use sea serpent armor which gives water breathing to swim underwater but nope my defense level was way too low for that it would take too much experience i thought about making water breathing potions but i didn't have any nether wart so what was i gonna do well remember how i just said a miracle needed to happen well a miracle happened in RL Craft, you can make water breathing potions with shiny scales and regular water bottles. No nether wart needed at all. I, I, I could not believe it. It was too good to be true. I tried to brew them and it worked. Three potions of three minute water breathing. I instantly flew back to where I died and tried to recover my loot. I got away, barely, and better yet, I somehow managed to pick up my bow, too. Out of all the things I got my bow, I started shooting at the sea serpent right away because I did not have time I needed to get my loot back, but it kept hiding underwater, and I didn't have time to wait, so I had to risk it and go closer to the water to kind of bait it towards me and get some attacks on it. What? Dude. No, man, I should have just put that freaking bow away, dude. The sea serpent misdirected me and then one-shot me. In diamond armor, one-shot me. My loot had likely despawned by now, but at least I had hope of getting my bow back again because I had just died with it, so the despawn timer on it would have been reset. At this point, I really needed to know what I was doing. I remembered that there was a way to teleport back to your death point by using a certain item. And after researching, I found out that it was called a grave scroll. And this was actually really easy to make. I got some gear on and used the grave scroll as soon as I could. And upon returning, I braced myself for another assault from the sea serpent. But when I looked around, I didn't see anything and instead, I found these blue sea serpent skills just floating in the water. I'm not exactly sure of what caused it to die, but I got back to looting right away. I did not have time. I looked around for a bit, looting, and there it was, my bow. It wasn't time to celebrate yet though, at all, because I continued looking for my other valuables and I was noticing that some of them were gone. Not all of them, but some of them. and. What was likely the most detrimental loss was my dragon bone rapier, which had sharpness 4 on it. I couldn't find it anywhere. It was a really powerful weapon, but unfortunately it despawned and I couldn't find it no matter how much I looked. And while this was a pretty disappointing loss, it was kind of a bittersweet moment because I was really happy with the retrieval of my bow and I headed back to the surface as soon as I could before any more sea serpents would attack me. God, that scared me so much. That was a jump scare. I thought that that was another sea serpent. My heart stopped for a moment. But fortunately, it was just a bird. Now, the bird did give me a debuff called weight, which made it so I couldn't jump, and I sunk into the ocean. Fortunately, I had water breathing, and eventually I was able to make it back up to the surface, place a bed, and sleep off the night. Day 40 was another big day. I got back home and I was able to make a full set of Tide Guardian armor using the Sea Serpent skills I had gotten. This was the best armor in the game and would make me significantly stronger when I would wear it. 
The bad news was that I couldn't wear the armor just yet because I needed a higher skill level in defense. My defense skill level was only at 16 and it needed to be at 20 meaning I had a lot of experience points to collect. I needed to enchant the armor as well, so I had these two objectives to conquer next. And that's what I mainly did throughout days 41 all the way to 47. I created a level 30 enchanting table, hunted for a lot of blights, and did a lot of enchanting. I got protection 4 on my chest plate, and I got life steal 4 on a new dragon bone rapier that I made. I just want to pause and say that this was an extremely important moment. You see, in RL Craft, you don't naturally regenerate health. The only way to regenerate it is to use bandages, have a regeneration potion, or use something like lifesteal. So, lifesteal would give me a guaranteed, consistent source of healing. This is crucial for defeating stronger enemies and is definitely a top tier enchantment. It saves me many, many times in the future, so I just wanted to make sure that I marked its importance. Getting back to it, the enchantment that I got on my boots wasn't that great, but I did get protection 4 on my leggings, and I also put sharpness 3 on my rapier, which would do for the time being. On day 42, I came back to get revenge on the Cyclops that ate my pets. I started firing at it with my bow while staying at a range, and I destroyed it. Honestly, I kind of felt a bit bad after because I kind of invaded the, the Cyclops' cave, but it ate my pets. Okay, that, that was not cool. Day 43, I made an unenchanting table, which lets you take enchantments off of a piece of gear and put them on a book instead. Also, I made a dragon bone saber instead of a rapier because when I would be running through dungeons, I would need more of a cleaving weapon to protect myself from groups of enemies. So I wanted to get that prepared. I also cleared multiple battle towers throughout this time from which I got two really powerful baubles actually. One of them was called the cobalt shield and this gave me permanent immunity to knockback. And the other one that I got was called the Broken Heart. I also found this building, which had a lot of spawners and chests on the top of it. When I checked the chests out, they actually had some really good loot. A lot of enchanted books, enchanted rings, other baubles, and glowing ingots as well, which I would need to make a dragon's eye. The building had more layers to it down below, but my inventory was full, so I just marked it on my antique atlas for the time being and plan to return to it later. On day 46, I enchanted my Tide Guardian helmet, and this marked the completion of my goal to enchant all of my gear. And by now, I was also already able to wear the Tide Guardian gear because I had gotten my defense skill level to 20. So I could equip everything. With my gear being prepared, it was now time to move on to the next chapter of my journey and start entering and defeating dungeons. And on day 48, that's exactly what I started to do. In these dungeons, I was looking for glowing ingots so that I could make a dragon's eye and then be able to defeat dragons, and also just any other good loot that I could find. And so with a bit of searching, I found this massive building, and I decided to see what's inside of it. As I broke in through a wall, I noticed that it had golden blocks everywhere along the walls, which I didn't necessarily need, but it showed that this place was not poor in any way. As I ventured through though, the dungeon ended up being really easy to clear. Yeah, I was one-shotting most of the mobs and there wasn't really any loot there. So I got out and decided to go to the other building that I had marked a while ago, this church looking building. I took a look inside and right away there were evokers spawning. For some reason, I got scared of them being powerful, and also, I didn't think of the fact that they dropped totems of undying. This was a totem of undying farm, and I didn't realize it, and ended up destroying the spawners that were there. It was bad, but anyways, I farmed up the evokers that were there, and I realized after that I shouldn't have broken the spawners, but honestly, it wasn't too bad because I got five totems of undying, which would probably be all that I needed. As I was heading home, the next morning came, 
And again, this annoying dragon that was at my base every single day was once again flying around and terrorizing me. And you know what? You know what? I was sick of it. I had had enough of being bullied around by this thing. I was supposed to get a dragon's eye before I would fight it, but I just couldn't wait any longer. I wanted to get rid of this dragon and I wanted to get rid of it now. So I engaged in combat with the dragon. I had to be extremely cautious of its fire breath because one shot of that at my rock and I could easily fall to my death. I tried to remain at range just firing my bow, but at one point, I got too close and the dragon shot at me. It killed my rock and as I was falling, I got my water bucket in hand just in time and was able to save myself. That was too close for comfort and now there were a lot of mobs spawning all over the place because it was nighttime. So I decided to quickly head to sleep and resume my fight with the dragon on the next morning. And the next day, I returned to finish what I had started. This is the most anticlimactic thing ever. What are you doing, my friend? Is it because I injured the dragon before? I got him! Wait, I actually, I actually got the dragon. There's no way. I, I got the dragon. It's dead. It's dead. Do I get fire from him? I was happy with having finally defeated the dragon that had been harassing me for all of the previous days. I didn't show it much, but I always had to sneak around my base to not get burnt to a crisp by this dragon. Using the fire dragon blood that I got from looting it, I was able to make a flamed dragon bone saber. I then put sharpness five on it, which I had gotten from unenchanting a saber that I had put two sharpness four books on before. And so, Sabaroth was created. I'm not sure why I put the apostrophe in the name, but it it looked cool, okay? I wanted to wait until I had lifesteal to use this weapon, but it would be ready pretty soon. I then returned to the building in which I had previously found evokers to see if there was anything else hidden within it. I entered through the front gate and was instantly met with pure darkness and spawners. As I ventured further into the dungeon, mobs were spawning all over the place and I found that it was strangely lit up with the redstone torches. I progressed through the whole dungeon, but it didn't really seem to have any more loot in it. It seemed like the evokers and the totems I'm undying from them were the only good loot in this building, but honestly, they were worth looting it. So with this building fully explored, I got on my rock and exited the building. On day 51, I only did one thing, but it was pretty big. I was able to get Lifesteal 4 and put it on Sabaroth. And on the next day, with Sabaroth complete, I decided that it was time to risk everything and try to clear a boss dungeon that I had marked earlier. Oh, I look sick, don't I? I mean, come on, guys. Like, seriously? Look at this. Look at this. I just look so awesome. It's amazing. All right, it's time to, to fight the boss, which I'm, I'm scared to do. Oh, my glasses are to the side. Now that's cool. Now that's being cool right there. I have no ex- I don't know what to expect, just so you all know that, okay? So... Um, I should have probably grabbed some type of potions or something, but sometimes you just have to go in because otherwise it gets boring. Oh, that scared me. Okay, that shouldn't scare me, but it did. Hey. Hey. Ow. Man, there's crazy mobs here. Cross necklace. Uh, what about the head? Yeah, I can wear it in the head. I think that's better. Get off me. Get off me. Get off me. Yeah. What do you have, huh? Oh, whoops. Let's not lose my sword. I'll loot after. Graboid? Wait, wait, wait. Ow. Let's go. Oh. Outsmart him. Ow. 
I've outsmarted it. Yeah, what you have now, huh? Easy. He didn't drop anything. Did the did everything get burned? Where are the items? What? I didn't get any items. I guess it made sense that he didn't drop anything because he was only the first boss and there were stronger, more dangerous bosses to come. Oh boy. What am I getting myself into? My god, he does so much damage. The Crypt Executioner gave me a debuff when he hit me that made it so that I couldn't shoot my bow. So what I ended up doing is just digging a hole through the wall and defeating him through that. Hey, work smart, not hard, right? Oh, easy. Come here. I'm gonna kill the boss with my sword just uh, so I can make sure I get the loot. Gotcha. What is this? Imp soul stone. He ended up dropping an imp soul stone, which actually gave me a pretty cool pet. Okay, now I have an imp pet. Gnick. Gnick. I then ventured deeper into the dungeon, and there was one boss left. The tyrant dragon. Oh my god. Um, there it is. There's the Tyrant Dragon. Got you all. There it is. Oh, the Tyrant Dragon. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, how do I do this? I don't know if I want to get in there with it. Golden apple. I got a dragon soul stone. Dude, no way. I just got a dragon soul stone. Dragon soul stone. What is that? The Zoat the Zoator. Zoator. Oh, this isn't even good. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I mean, it's still cool. I mean, hey. And so, I had defeated the Tyrant Dragon. The dragon that I got from the Dragon Soul Stone wasn't really that good because it couldn't even fly, but it was still cool to get some type of a dragon as a pet that I could use. Afterwards, I went over to a chest room that was there to collect my loot, but honestly, the loot wasn't really that great. The only decent thing was this obsidian skull bobble, which made it so that I couldn't take damage from burning anymore, but 
Other than that, there was not really anything. What I did gain from this dungeon though was confidence. Confidence to clear any dungeon that I would come across from now on. With that, I had successfully finished adventuring through the dungeon. I returned home and put a power four book on my bow, making it have power five, and I renamed it to Agronok. I'm not sure where I got this name from either, but I liked it. Anyways, I didn't really do anything else for the rest of this day, but on the next day, I made up for that inactivity. On this day, I finally decided to tame a Ventoraptor, which was an amazing decision, and honestly, I should have done it a long time ago. But now is still a good time to do it. These things are crazy fast ground mounts, the fastest in the game. I put this speed to use and ended up finding another boss dungeon. This dungeon ended up being an identical one to the one that I had just completed, but I decided to quickly run through it and see if it would have any better loot in it. And also, I was really curious if the dragon soul stone that the tyrant dragon dropped could give me anything better than the other dragon that I got. The fights in the dungeon were pretty much all the same and they were even easier because I knew what to expect now. And also my vento raptor ended up being an incredible fighting pet as well, which I did not expect. I got another dragon soul stone from the tyrant dragon and when I used it, I actually got a Morok, which is a really good dragon because this dragon can fly and it's pretty fast and it also has a good amount of health so in cases where I would need to fight dragons and more specifically something like the ender dragon this would be a lot better than the rock because it wouldn't get one shot that was the end of day 57 and uh, we need to talk you see while I was editing I saw that on the next day right here I show the clock and it says that it's day 77 now don't worry, I, there wasn't a jump uh, in 20 days. That would have been terrible. I still have the same loot from the previous day. No skip and anything there. I think unfortunately what happened is that while I was editing the footage, since sometimes I'm underground or inside or sometimes the weather is confusing, sometimes I just missed days because I literally couldn't see them while editing. I couldn't see them even pass. Anyways, I hope that all of you are okay with this. I did not want this to happen at all. Fortunately, it was only the days in the top right that were off. The footage itself was the exact same and it was all there. With that being said, the upcoming days are counted correctly and they are the most interesting days from this adventure. So let us get back into it. So, day 77. Today, I decided that in addition to getting the dragon's eye, I needed to also start preparing the resources needed to summon a Malgalich. What I needed to get is an undead soul cube and an emerald soul key, both of which are quite difficult to get because for the soul cube, you need a soul stone that only drops from certain rare mobs, and for the soul key, you need a nether star. So I needed wither skeleton skulls. I knew the dungeons could have both of these things, and so I needed to continue looting more of them. I ran around on my Ventoraptor into the next day, and eventually I was able to find a dungeon with a boss named Precious in it, so it was different from the ones that I had cleared before. I broke in, and it was just pitch black inside. I could not see anything. I could barely see where I was standing. Also, I ended up having to turn off my shaders here because I was really lagging. Anyways, this was a pretty interesting dungeon. It spawned zombies with armor equipped, and as I went further, it had a lot of shadowy creatures running around. I fought mobs off for a while, and after a bit of exploring, I found Precious. Oh my, is that, that's Precious. Oh, Precious is dead. Okay. <laughs> my Ventoraptor just wrecked him, but there were stronger bosses up ahead. Nightshade. Chaos Serpent. Oh, oh. Uh-oh. I think that's that looks like Nightshade. Uh-oh. Dude, he's gonna run fast at me. I know it, dude. I know, I know how this works. <laughs> Dead. I used the Aberrant Soul Stone I got right away on accident, and it ended up giving me the Beholder pet. And this thing ended up being pretty cool. Oh, oh! Wait. Oh, wait, that's mine, right? Yeah. That's OP. 
That is OP right there. As I was progressing through the tower though, this happened. And keep in mind that if the health on my head goes to zero, I die instantly. Oh my god, my sword, my sword! Where's my sword? Dude, what is happening? Oh, I almost died. I actually got so close to dying there, but now it was time to fight Nightshade. That might, oh, is that the Nightshade? That's, that's the Nightshade. Oh, oh wow. Let's go. Let's go. Whew. Gotcha. Yeah, Nightshade turned out to be pretty easy, but what I will say is that he was the only boss to go outside of his spawn area, which I did not expect him to do at all. Anyways, while I didn't get much from this dungeon, I did get the Beholder, which is a pretty cool mount at least. And on the next day, I returned home and tried it out. Oh. <laughs> Oh wow, it gives me fire resistance too. <laughs> oh my. This is. This is OP. This thing is crazy. Oh, I can explode things. Yeah, I ended up getting kind of carried away with it and just exploded things for the whole day. Honestly, though, it was worth it. Woo. Day 82 came along and I had finally collected all of the materials that I needed to make a dragon's eye. All right, move items, dragon's eye. <laughs> I got it. I got the dragon's eye, man. Uh, what a good day. And also, after looking some more into Amalglitch, I found out that the Undead Soul Stone can be obtained by summoning a mini-boss called the Lunar Gru. And to summon him, I still needed a Nether Star. So, as much as I didn't want to, I decided I'd try to go to the Nether since Wither Skeletons would be pretty much guaranteed to spawn around there. There was one problem though. I needed a source of water to drink while I would be in the Nether, otherwise I would run out of thirst. So. What I ended up doing is I made a water canteen, which stores some water that you can drink, and then I enchanted it with mending so that I could replenish its uses, and it actually worked. And with that, it was time to go to the nether, but I had no idea what to expect. Should I do this? That's the question. I'm so scared. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy, here we go. Here we go. Oh, and my nether portal is gone. Good thing I brought the matchbox. Ow. Oh, there we go. The mending does work. Wait, now I can't drink water. No. Oh. The canteen ended up glitching out and I had to return to the overworld to replenish it. But when I headed back into the nether, I was met with these exploding heads and as I explored more, I ran into more crazy mobs. Dude, what is going on? Oh 
On the next day, I wanted to take a little break from the nether, so I returned home, reorganized some of my things, and then went back in. I flew around exploring on my beholder because it had fire resistance, so it was actually perfect for the nether, and I ended up finding this random nether portal in the middle of nowhere. Whoa. Is that just... I don't know if this leads to some bad place or what. Oh, wait, that's a, is that a dragon? I don't know what this thing is. Some dragon, it's not attacking me though. It just doesn't take damage. Killed it. Did the loot burn? I wasn't able to get the loot that it dropped because it went into lava and I wasn't really able to find it. I wasn't really able to find anything else and the mending on my canteen bugged out again, so I decided that I would return home before my thirst ran out. But as I tried to find my nether portal, even though I had it marked on my atlas, it was difficult for me to find an entrance to it and what Y level it was on. I started panicking because my thirst was just about to hit zero and I had no idea what would happen if it ran out. It was already making my screen blurry and I thought it would kill me. So I put all of my stuff in a chest but forgot to take my baubles off when I did and I went down a hole and searched for an entrance to my nether portal. While I was in this hole, I realized eventually that I still had my baubles on me and that stressed me out even more because the dragon's eye took me forever to make. I did not want to lose it and I wanted to find a way up immediately. I guess the stress was just getting in my head because at first I forgot that I could just summon a mount to get up and I was breaking blocks with my fist to staircase up. Thankfully though, I eventually realized that I could mount up and afterwards return back to my chest. At this point, I was at zero thirst, but I wasn't dying or anything and I realized that I would be okay to put all my stuff back on and mine towards the nether portal. No, I didn't real- oh my god, I didn't look at the durability. <sighs> yeah, I don't know how I let my pickaxe break, but I did. Luckily, I had the resources to craft a new stone pickaxe, otherwise I would have been done for. I mined straight down in hopes that the nether portal would be below me, which you should never do, and after a lot of mining, it actually was. I was extremely relieved and instantly headed over in the overworld to drink some water and then settled down at home. On the next day, I remembered that a tower I had looted before had some wither skeletons on the top of it, so I used my Ventoraptor to return back to it. There ended up being a lot of rooms to explore here and some decent loot as well. The wither skeleton spawners that I had seen on the top of the tower before had unfortunately run out from when I was defeating them before, but I did find some more wither skeleton spawners on the outside of the structure. And the first wither skeleton I killed gave me a wither skeleton skull, so I was already off to a good start. Unfortunately though, as I was fighting the skeletons, I was not paying attention to the durability of my armor, and it broke. I still stayed and fought off the rest of the wither skeletons carefully, but they didn't end up dropping any more skulls and I just headed home on my raptor. By the next morning, I got home and found out that I didn't have enough sea serpent scales to make a new helmet. So for the time being, I just put a diamond helmet on and planned to hunt for some more sea serpents. But I wanted a quicker way of being able to defeat them. So I made a stone of the sea bobble. This basically gives you depth strider three and if you stack that with depth strider three on your boots, you become really fast in the water like crazy fast I mean check this out there we go
go. Gotcha. Wow, that is quick. I was able to go so fast that I was just destroying any sea serpent I came across with no troubles. On day 86, I used the skills that I got to repair my armor and make some new armor as well. I was able to enchant the new armor with protection 4, so my set was looking even better than it was before. I was just about as strong as I could get, which was exactly the form that I needed to be in if I wanted to have a chance at defeating a Malgolich. I then got back to looking for Wither Skeleton Skulls on the following day because I had no time to lose. I searched for underwater dungeons this time because I knew that they could have some pretty good loot, including Wither Skeleton Skulls, and with the speed that I could travel in water, finding them was is gonna be pretty easy. The first dungeon I found ended up having an elytra in it, which I didn't really expect at all, but that was a cool find. In another one, I found a chest plate that was enchanted with strengthened vitality too, which gives you extra hearts. So I kept this to unenchant and then put onto my chest plate later. I kept looting the dungeon, searching for wither skulls, and the best thing ever happened. Oh, no way. Let's go, dude. Let's go. I cannot believe... It. What? Oh my... <laughs> yes. Yes, dude. <sighs> Finally. I could not believe it. Two Wither Skeleton Skulls, exactly what I needed to summon the Wither in combination with the skull I already had at home. So, I used my recall potion, and as the sun came up on the next day, I fought the wither. And warning, it was really blurry. Ow. I can't see anything. I could not see a single thing that whole fight. <laughs> With the wither down and a nether star required, I was able to make a soul key. And with this, I could summon the lunar groom mini boss, which would give me an undead soul stone. So I started making an altar from which I could summon the boss, but a dragon was flying around me and it was getting too close for comfort. And you know what? I decided to fight it. After my last dragon fight, I was pretty confident and this time I actually just went in for melee hits and it worked really well. I can't even see the dragon. Let's go. And you're gone. This is why you do not mess with me, dragon. Come on. With the dragon down and the space around me clear, I fought the Lunar Grew. Oh, yep, that worked. Let's go. Easy. Alright. Undead Soul Stone. Got him. Now I had obtained an undead soul stone so that I could make an undead soul cube and summon a Malglitch. It didn't feel right to fight him before the ender dragon though. And on top of that, the ender dragon would give me a lot of experience that I could use to become even more powerful. So I set out to find a stronghold on my Ventoraptor and soon enough, I was able to find it. I got everything prepared and by the next day, I entered into the end. Now going into the end, I thought that my biggest challenge would of course be the ender dragon. But, uh, no. No, definitely not. Uh-oh, what are you? Man, I'm just here to fight the Ender Dragon. Give me a moment. What is going on? Oh, my... Yeah, there were a lot of mobs 
all over the place and they did a lot of damage. After fighting the mobs for quite a while, I eventually started getting to destroying crystals. But for some reason, at first, I completely forgot that I could summon my mount. I think it was the stress getting to me again. And I wasted a lot of time just blocking up the towers. Eventually, thankfully, I came to my senses and I summoned a Morok to destroy the crystals with, and that made it way easier. Ow, ow, ow. And after breaking all of the crystals, the Ender Dragon was finally vulnerable, and I took the opportunity to defeat it. Gotcha. Gotcha, dude. Finally. Got him. When I returned to the overworld, all of my health got reduced down, which was kind of strange, but I was okay and headed back home. When I was back, I made use of all of the levels I had gotten, and I put three new enchantments on my belt. Multi-shot three, range, and I'm breaking three. Each of these increasing its effectiveness, especially multi-shot. And with that, I had everything I needed to fight a Malglitch. So I got prepared, and on the next day, I set out to do so. But, uh... We need to talk, because I didn't end up recording the fight by accident. Did I actually just do that? Dude, come on, man. No way, dude. It's always for the most important things. When you tell yourself that you will not mess it up, it always gets messed up, and I didn't record the fight. Now don't worry, I do set out to try and fight him again, because I just couldn't leave it like that. But I did defeat a Malglitch on my first try, and to show you from the little proof that I do have, which I don't expect you all to take as 100%, if you look in the chat, I have the achievement for when you use the Totem of Undying for the first time called Post Mortal. And then right below that, it says you have now learned Rank 2 of Amalgalich. And you learn Rank 2 of mobs once you defeat them. I mean, obviously I could have went into creative mode or something to defeat him, but I, I didn't. I mean, I think you would see if I did. I think it would show up as game mode or something. So, I mean, I, I hope that's proof enough, but again, I couldn't just leave it like that. Of course, I'm gonna fight him again, and Amalglitch luckily drops Nether Stars and Undead Soul Stones, so I already had the materials I needed to summon him once again. Getting back to it, I needed to get to defeating Amalglitch, and I needed to do it as soon as possible. Because if day 100 would end, and I still wouldn't defeat Amalglitch, that's it. That the, 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 the whole journey would be over. I couldn't defeat him because it wouldn't be within the 100 days, so I had to go out. Now, I had the most difficult items to collect, but I looked around my chests, and I didn't have any obsidian in them. Zero. And I needed obsidian to make the altar to summon Amalgalich. Now was <laughs> seriously not the time to mine Obsidian. Anyways, to look for obsidian, I just had to mine down. I ended up making an opening to a lava pool, and then I was able to use water to convert it into obsidian and mine that up. Now that I had everything I needed to summon Amalgalich, I started building the altar. Amalgalich is widely known to be the hardest boss to defeat in RL Craft, and for good reason. The most important thing that I had to do was make sure that whenever Amalgalich's eyes would light up, I would face the other way and hold down Sprint right away. Because during this phase, he starts pulling you in. And if he successfully pulls you in all the way to him, he can two-shot you. And so with 99 days of preparation behind this moment, it was time to fight a Malglitch. And I only had one shot at this because if I wouldn't defeat him here, I would not be able to defeat him within the 100 days. 
Let's do it again. Let's go. Oh no. Dude. Oh my god, dude. dude there we go second time <sighs> am i recording this time yes 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 dude <laughs> okay i cannot believe i did not record the first time man <laughs> i did it i did it dude i did it i defeated it man most difficult boss in this pack that's it. What day is it? Day 100. <sighs> we did it. We finally defeated a Malglitch. Throughout these 100 days, we did so much. We got multiple mounts. We got the best and coolest gear I've ever seen. We adventured through so many dungeons and we defeated the Ender Dragon. 100 days ago, I wouldn't have been able to tell you that I could defeat a Mount Glitch, and frankly, I couldn't. But after 99 days of preparation and adventuring, I did. And you can do the same with anything you want in life. Just set your goals, do your absolute best to achieve them, and you will. Hey everyone, this video was quite the journey and I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did. Also, I have a Discord server and a Reddit page and I often pop into them and talk to everyone and take any suggestions that anyone might have. So if you want to become a part of those communities, make sure to join them. Other than that everyone, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.
Peace out, everybody.